Hi, this is Usha. Today is 6th September 2022 and we are going to see the today's current affairs in this video. And welcome to Rathor's IS Academy. So first of all, let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is a motivational quote. Yes, I want to motivate you students because at least 10 or 15 students who are watching this video, they will be get motivated and they will be working hard with my motivation. Okay, so if you see today's quote which says that it is not about being the best. It's about being better than you were yesterday. So you have to analyze like what are the things that you have studied in yesterday and how your day was yesterday and try to make that today better than yesterday and this is the way how you have to prepare in this UPSC journey. So now let us try to see first topic. So this topic it is about India-Pakistan relations. And this article it is important from your mains point of view especially. But from prelims also you can get some questions like especially map based question. As you all know that Indus river which is mainly flowing between India and Pakistan and finally it is entering into Arabian Sea. So you have to know about different tributaries of this Indus. And even between India and Pakistan, we have this Indus Water Treaty. So you have to know about some clause regarding that treaty. And if you see, there are a number of rivers, like tributaries of these rivers, okay, Indus, for example, Jhelum, Ravi, okay, Satluj. So you have to know, so which are the rivers which comes under India and which comes under Pakistan under this Indus Water Treaty. And not only this Indus River, but even you have to know about border security between India and Pakistan okay so that is very important and even you have to know about which are the states they are sharing boundary with India and Pakistan so these are some important areas from this topic that you have to prepare from your prelims point of view so now let us try to see this topic in detail actually this article which gave some political things okay but they are not much important from UPSC point of view so what are the thing that is important from UPSC point of view so we are going to discuss that and this topic is exclusively important from your means especially analysis of this article so here this article as i said which is talking about india and pakistan peace so if we are talking about especially issues between india and pakistan so these issues you are not new now so we have to go back towards our partition plan that is mount batten plan so with this mount batten plan that led to partition of undivided that is British India into Pakistan and as well as India. So this thing we will be studying in our modern history correct. So in modern history we will be studying about Indian freedom struggle and this Indian freedom struggle from the formation of INC that is in in 1885 till 1947. So what are the events what are the movements that happened so that will be very important. So in that Indian national movement yes we will be also studying about what is the Scripps mission plan. So after the failure of the Scripps mission plan, so we came up with this Quit India movement. So after that Quit India movement, especially we came up with this Mount Batten plan and finally that led to partition of India and we got independence, okay, for Pakistan and as well as India in 1947. So if you go back to the relationship between India and Pakistan, okay, during the British, undivided British India, yes, we have to know some important facts. And after independence, so what are the changes that we had in our relations? So that is also the one thing that you have to focus. So here, if you see India and Pakistan, they share linguistic, they share culture, they share geographic and economic links. So if we are talking about this during the partition of India, so most of the fertile land that went into Pakistan and that region used to be uh, very good for the growth of cotton. So because of this we can say yes we share economic links, we share geographical links and we share cultural links because during this uh, British India that is undivided India yes there were number of shrines which are present across in this India okay so which are now even visited by the Pakistans and even Indians they can visit some shrines in Pakistan so because of this yes we have good people to people contact good cultural contact and even linguistical linguistic links between this India and Pakistan correct so here what happened so even though if you are having good linguistic links cultural links geographical links economic links yes what happened there is a very complexity 
okay very complex relationship between india and pakistan which is seen for example regarding historical and as well as political events that are happening between india and pakistan if you are talking about this indo pakistan relations which have been defined by violent partition of british india in 1947 and after that even even at that time so one important challenge which is present before our government was integration of princely states so there were number of princely states okay they were integrated into india by the different means for example police action for example instrument of accession so jammu and kashmir integrated into india through this instrument of accession but still now this kashmir issue it is one of the cause of concern between india and pakistan so pakistan says this kashmir which is a part of pakistan and india says no no kashmir it is an integral part of india and we came up with this line of control and in this kashmir region also we have pak occupied kashmir and even some area which is present in this pak occupied kashmir which ceded by pakistan to china so it is also one key issue okay regarding india and pakistan and soon after we got independence in year 1947 india pakistan yes we developed or we established some diplomatic relations but what happened because of this violent partition of this british india and because of this territorial claims or quickly overshadowed over the relationship for example you can talk about jammu and kashmir issue so since their independence since 1947 two countries they fought three major wars so let me know in which years india and pakistan they fought wars so please do the homework okay so yesterday in the yesterday's lecture i got good responses from you and that encouraged me a lot so please try to giving uh, give your answers in the comment box so that it will be like a more encouraging for me and i will be discussing much more content which is important from our upsc point of view okay so let me know which are the three major wars which happened between india and pakistan so if you are talking about one important issue that is a kashmir conflict so kashmir conflict it is a one of the center points of all these conflicts okay between india and pakistan and we also came up with this liberation of bangladesh through this bangladesh liberation war of 1971 and after this bangladesh liberation war that is in 1980s so relationship between two countries india and pakistan they have increasingly soured there was soured relationship between india and pakistan so we do not have good relations so after this 1980s what happened so there were number of attacks which were mainly done by pakistan in india so for example siachen conflict for example kashmir insurgency in this 1989 so i i hope you had watched this kashmir files movie okay so if you have not watched so please watch that kashmir files so this was a very very good movie i can say and this one is indian and pakistan nuclear test which happened in 1998 and indo pakistan war that is the kargil war in 1999 and even india pakistan uh, attack okay so indian parliament attack which done by pakistan in year 2001 and not only that in 2007 there was patan court attack and 2019 recent pulwama attack okay and if you see here even you can talk about mumbai terror attack so recently one movie released that is a major movie which depicts about this uh, um, taj hotel okay taj hotel attack okay so this was a very very interesting movie and i watched that movie twice so if you have not watched it, so please watch that movie then you will be getting like so how many people they uh, they lost their life especially nsg people and even uh delhi uh, sorry even mumbai police and even number of civilians they lost their life in this mumbai attacks okay so here because of all these things like siachen conflict kashmir insurgency and different wars that is a kargil war and pulwama attack mumbai attack etc so because of this what happened the relationship between india and pakistan was very very low after this 1980s and if you're talking about you will be getting one question like so yes the relationship or so because of this events that are happening but what are the steps you are taken by the government to come up with a normal diplomatic relationship so this question that automatically strikes in your mind yes there were number of attempts to taken especially to normalize the relationship between india and pakistan for example india followed consistent and as well as principled policy towards pakistan 
because India had a foreign policy. So this foreign policy is a guiding principle. Okay, so it will guide our country like so how our relation should be with the other countries. For example, we have neighborhood first policy. We have activist policy like that, right? So if you're talking about this neighborhood first policy, as you all know, India, which is sharing boundary with Pakistan, yes. We have to maintain good relationship with Pakistan under this neighborhood policy. That is a neighborhood first policy. So under this policy, India followed a consistent and principled policy towards Pakistan and India, which mainly seeks to normalize the relationship between India and Pakistan. But what happened? Not only this under this neighborhood first policy, but even government came with a number of summits. For example, Shimla summit. For example, Agra summit, Lahore summit, and these were the number of and uh, numerous items which were mainly made by India to improve relationship with Pakistan. And also in 2014, India invited Prime Minister that is Nawaz Sharif to our ceremony that is a PM Modi external uh, swearing ceremony. Okay, so why why this uh, Prime Minister of this Pakistan was invited, especially to propose bilateral dialogue between India and Pakistan, okay, especially regarding terrorism across the border. Okay, recently we also uh, saw in the news that so one person who is a suicide attacker, he entered into India and across the border he was catched and finally he died. So here Pakistan accepted to take the body of that so and so person and this news also present in our today's uh, newspaper in the first page of the Hindu itself. Okay, so this is one of the important thing that we have to uh, think about. That is a cross-border terrorism between India and Pakistan and even violence against India including the cross-border terror attacks. For example, Patan Court Air Base attack in 2016 and even army camp attack in Uri okay, in 2016. So there was also one movie regarding this Uri attack. And next one here is even they attacked uh, some envoys of Indian security forces in this Pulwama. In 2019 so here what happened yes India it is trying to normalize the relations but from the Pakistan side so there were a number of terror groups like Jaisha -e Mahmud okay LET etc so they are attacking India so if you move forward here this article says that so on 7th August 2019 so Pakistan also took some unilateral actions to downgrade diplomatic relations with India because so what is the significance of the 7th August 2019? So 5th August and 6th August of this 2019, so our government of India diluted this Article 370 of Indian Constitution. So which talks about special category status for this Jammu and Kashmir. So because of this, what happened? So Pakistan didn't like that and it further downgraded diplomatic relationship with India. And if you're talking about what are the security issues with Pakistan? So if you're focusing on some important security issues, so first one is cross-border terrorism. As you all know that, so number of times uh, we can see the attacks which is mainly done on this uh, military and even there is infiltration which is happening and many a times we can see some bombs will be coming up, okay, and even drone uh, violations and ceasefire violations that are seen across this Indo-Pakistan border. And repeatedly we can see there will be some perpetrators they are entering into India through sea route or any other route and they are attacking and even hijacking of our aeroplanes. And if you are talking about one important aspect that is trade and commerce. So as you see here at present Pakistan which is affected by the floods. So what are the reasons for the floods in Pakistan? First and the foremost reason here is excessive rainfall during this monsoon. And second one is because of this climate change, what happened? There is increasing of heat. So because of this increasing of heat or high temperature, that will lead to creation of low pressure area. So whenever low pressure area is created, it will be attracting the winds from the high pressure area. Okay. So because of this, this is one of the important reasons for the heavy rainfall in Pakistan and even land you know, effect. Okay, and even because of this Lanino effect, so it led to the heavy rainfall or heavy downpour in this Pakistan region. And because of this, the flooding of the major rivers is happening. And about two-fifths of this Pakistan, which is uh, under the threat of floods now. Okay, so because of this condition, yes, now there is no choice for this Af Pakistan. And yes, they have to provide the food grains for their people. And because of this flood, the standing crops had been in the loss. Okay. So it mainly affected the standing crops. 
so because of this to ensure the food security for the people of pakistan yes now here recently recently pakistan said that we are going to get some food grains and cotton sugar from this india okay so because of this now we can say yes there will be like promotion of trade between india and pakistan so if you go back to 1990s so india accorded this most favored nation status to pakistan so whenever we are offering any country which is offering most favored nation to any other country then what happened so so and so country okay for example if you see country one which offered this mfn most favored nation status to second country so this second country can get goods and services at a very low cost so there will be very less tariff or no tariff okay so in 1996 india offered this most favored nation status to pakistan so whether it had been used by this pakistan so the question question here is whether it is used answer is no because in august 2012 india announced the reduction of 30 percentage of this safta that is sensitive list for non non least developed countries of safta including pakistan but what happened at that time here so pulwama attack which happened in year 2019 so because of this pulwama attack india withdrawn this most favored nation status to this pakistan okay so this is about the trade and commerce and if you are talking about tariff okay india also increased the custom duty on exports from this pakistan that is 200% okay so because of this the trade and commerce between this uh, india and pakistan is very low so we are talking about people to people relations so as of 1st july 2019 209 fishermen and 52 other civilian prince prisoners they were believed to be indian nationals they were in the custody of this pakistan authorities so what important issue between india and pakistan we can also say about this uh, fisherman issue so this fisherman issue between india and pakistan is there and even india and sri lanka is there so whenever these fishermen they are crossing this international boundary and whenever they are entering into the waters of other country so other country policemen or navy they will be catching our fishermen so this is a issue which is present between india and pakistan and even india and sri lanka so this is a one more issue and to address this issue here india suggested pakistan to come up with mechanism of joint judicial committee okay which mainly provides some humanitarian issues or humanitarian assistance for this fishermen uh, and as well as prisoners okay and even if you are talking about religion yes there were number of shrines that can be uh, that can be visited by this pakistanis and shrines in pakistan they can be visited by the indians okay so the visit to religious shrines between india and pakistan is governed by bilateral protocol on visits to religious shrines and this uh, agreement which came between india and pakistan in year 1974 okay and if you are talking about recent development that is regarding kartarpur corridor so government of india in 2018 which formally conveyed to this government of pakistan to initiate this kartarpur corridor on indian side and even it also urged pakistan to build a corridor okay so through this corridor here the here this pilgrims from india they can visit this kartarpur shrine okay throughout the year so this is about this india pakistan relations and these are some important points that will be helpful to write your mains answer okay i hope it is very much clear and now let us try to see next topic so there are two articles in our hindu newspaper which talks about this article so there is one lead article and one more it is uh, given in the text and context so this article which is talking about importance of seed belts and i hope many of you who are watching this video so they will be driving uh, cars and they will be moving in cars exam for example correct so if you are not wearing the seat belt so what is the impact so that is the thing you have to think about so why the seat belts and the safety in this cars is in use so because of former because of this former chairman of tata sons that is cyrus mistri he died because of car accident and he is traveling in benz car it is a very very uh, very very luxurious car i can say so even though he was uh, uh, traveling in this benz car he hit with an accident and finally he lost his life so in this context as as you are going to be a future bureaucrats and you are going to be the good citizens tomorrow right so because of this yes you have to know about what are the safety features that are present in the car 
So now let us try to understand this topic. So what happened recently National Crimes Record Bureau which came up with a report and it said that so about 1,55,622 people in 2021, they lost their life because of accidents. So because of accidents, so more than 1.5 lakh people, they lost their life in the road accidents. So actually this level, when we are, this data, when we are comparing with the 2014, it is a very, very high. So here, actually, if you are wearing seat belt, and if your car which is having airbags, then whenever you are hitting with road accidents also, so there is a very less chance of fatality or mortality. So I can say these are avoidable accidents. Okay, so many of them are avoidable accidents. So for that, if you want to avoid this type of accidents in future, yes, we have to increase awareness. We have to increase awareness about car safety deployments okay and that should be enforced by our road safety authorities so recently here former chairman of tata sons that is cyrus misri and fellow passengers they lost their life on sunday when car they were traveling in which mainly met with an accident near in maharashtra in near this palgar in maharashtra it hit an accident finally the people they died so here through this case study yes we can understand so if you are using just low cost resilient systems restraint system for example seat belts for example airbags equipments so this will be very helpful to reduce the chances of fatalities okay so we can use this low cost restraint system for example seat belts for example airbags equipments so that will finally help to reduce car passengers related fatalities or deaths so if we're talking about this report in this box which says that so the report which mainly prepared by transportation research and injury prevention center which says that so whenever we are using airbags in our car that will reduce the mortality by 63 percentage and whenever you are using seat belt that will reduce the mortality by 72 percentage and if you are using both this uh, seat belt and as well as airbags that will reduce the mortality by 80 percentage so if you are wearing seat belt if suddenly if you are even uh, even applying the sudden brake so what happens so this seat belt will not allow you to come forward so it will it will it will catch you firmly okay from moving forward so because of this whenever you are using the seat belts in your car then what happened so you will be having a less chances of getting injuries to your head you will be not falling forward and you are not hitting your head with the objects which are present before you so because of this what happened there's a less chance of getting injury to your head to your chest part so because of this what happened the fatality rates will be very very low and other aspects such as proper use of this headrest so in the seat also you will be having headrest so mostly many of you will be not using headrest even even i whenever i'm 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 going for any journey so i will be also not using the headrest but just i will be using the seat belt that's it so many times my husband will be saying that use this headrest but i will be feeling not much comfortable for using this headrest but now i understand that so what's the importance of this headrest so headrest is very important because it will keep your neck in a position so while you are doing any journey so while you are in journey so if sudden break is applied or if uh, if you are going with a very high speed sometimes what happen sometimes whenever you are feeling sleepy also in the journey so what happened your head will be moving like this front and back so because of this suddenly if there is any injury which happened to your neck means that will leads to the dislocation of your bones vertebrae which is present in your in your neck that is a, that is called a cervical vertebra dislocation so dislocation of your vertebrae will happen so because of this dislocation of this vertebrae that will be causes serious damage to your brain okay your brain may not function and even the muscles which are present around your neck will be also get damaged and nerves and tendons of your neck okay so because of this if you are using this headrest then that will be helpful mainly to decrease the damage of risk of getting damage of your brain okay so these are some important things so if you are having any disc location or if you are having 
tendons dislocation etc then what happened so what will be the signs and symptoms that you can see like your neck will be feeling like stiff you can't move here and there freely so neck stiffness will be there and pain in your neck and numbness and even ringing in your ears will be also one of the signs and symptoms and even blurred vision sleeplessness etc so these will be some signs and symptoms so if you move on so here in this uh, box this box which also gives you some data so here iit delhi report says that so about 2 percentage of total length of our india will be like national highways and in this national highways we can see high rate of accidents okay this national highways they will be contributing 36 percentage of fatalities so why why because the one important reason why there is increasing of accidents in this national highways is over speed Okay, over speed. Over speed is a one of the important reason for the increasing of accidents in this national highway. And while the proximate causes of the deaths and injuries to passengers in this particular incident, it was high speed driving. Okay, so about 56 percentage of this India's road accidents which happened because of this over speed. So even if you're going in the highways, you will be having some signboards like, so they will be saying that you have to go only 80 speed here. Okay, only 60 speed or 40 speed. So many a times whenever we are driving, so we will be not focusing on that signboards. And we will be not following that rules. And even especially I found one thing uh, which is very much relevant regarding the signboard here is, so whenever we are going to our hometown, okay, so at that area in middle, so there is a time, uh, there is a speed limit like we should not cross 75 speed. But many a times we didn't uh, saw that and we will be going like 80 to 90 speed there. So whenever we are going to hometown, hometown the chalan that will be given on our vehicle, it is like 1350 rupees. So one day we saw that. And finally, yes, we have to locate where is that signboard located. So uh, I and my husband, we slowly went on the road and we tried to find where is that signboard is present which showing the speed limit so when you're when you're going very slowly and we are going at 40 speed at that time so we found beyond behind one tree so there was a signboard so as it is not at all visible so if you particularly search about that signboard only we can see that unless and until so if you are going at least 60 or 70 speed you can't find that so this is the one problem so here what is the reason for the over speed so there is no proper displacing of the signboards also so government need to take some steps like so this signboard should be visible properly for the drivers so that they can control their speed so that will lead to decreasing of accidents okay so this is the one case study i want to share okay and if you see here the seat belt performs many functions so whenever you are using the seat belts, yes, they will be having several functions. So they will hold you, hold you firmly whenever there is any sudden break which mainly happened. And even what happened in some vehicles, this seat belt is connected to the airbags. So whenever you are wearing the seat belt, then only this airbags will open. Okay, and it will, it will also hold your pelvis and chest tight. And will be also preventing you with the collision with the collisions with the objects within the vehicle okay so in this way a seat belt is very very useful and if you want to increase your lifespan and if you want to improve your standard of living yes try to use seat belts from now onwards so let me know how many of you are going to use the seat belts from now and if you see this table which mainly talks about some data so even road transport ministry said that during 2017 shocking of around 27000 people they lost their life because of not using of the seat belts so if you want to save your life and if you want to look after your family so try to wear the seat belts and now let us try to see the next topic so this topic is about higher education and this topic is very important from your mains point of view so now let us try to see this topic in detail so if you're talking about education so recently what is the context recently we celebrated 75th year of our independence so in this context our union education minister he said in a reply to the debate in Lok Sabha that 
so people should let go the idea of universities must be funded by the government that means he is encouraging private investment private funding in this higher education so if we are talking about higher education so what are the problems of this higher education so let me know first so what are the problems of higher education in india so first problem is there is no proper funding there is no proper spending from the government there is no proper infrastructure and enrollment of women is very less in this higher education there is no training trained faculty and if you are talking about education system or curriculum that is outdated so what are the books that we are using they are outdated and if you are talking about research and development so there is no proper emphasis on research and development in this higher educations there is no proper infrastructure so these were the sub four to five problems that we are facing in our higher education so here our union minister he said that so people should let go idea of of public funding in these universities then what will be the impact that is the thing which is given in this article so that is the thing that we are going to discuss right so here because of this statement which is given by our union education minister it mainly encourages that all autonomous bodies to maximize their generation of internal sources so they will start collecting the large amount of the fees from the students and they will try to attain self sufficiency of revenues correct so if we are talking about what is the vision of this national education policy so we came up with this national education policy in 2020 and it is like 2 years now so this national education policy 2020 which envisaged to promote increased access to education increased quality of education or equity of education and increased inclusion also and here it focused that great opportunity to be provided for outstanding public education so these are some important vision of this national education policy and here this national education policy which also provided an assurance that autonomy of public institutions would be backed by adequate public funding so even this nep said that this higher education institutions they need to be properly funded by this public that is the government should be funding this institutions and even if you are talking about in reality about here 1968 policy 1968 education policy said that so we need to increase expenditure in this education sector and we need to go for uh, expenditure is like at least 6 percentage of our gdp but here it is not reality even now we are spending just less than 2 percentage of our gdp in our education sector okay so here any national education policy 2020 which mainly said that this level of public funding was extremely critical for achieving high quality and equitable public education system and even if you go back to this 1968 policy which is mainly based on this uh, kothari commission report and this report said that so higher education should be given getting at least 2 percentage of gdp but it has not been achieved and if you see the data of expenditure in this higher education so if i compare with this 2010 11 to this 2019 20 there is a drastical decreasing decrease in the expenditure so if you see in this 2010 to 2011 the expenditure was like 0.86 percentage and now here in this 2019 20 expenditure year is 0.52 percentage there is the decrease from 0.86 percentage to 0.52 percentage okay and if you're talking about the central expenditure in this higher education which had been dropped from 0.33 gdp uh, of gdp to this 0.16 percentage of gdp and now let us try to see what will be the impact of this privatization of uh, higher education so if we're talking about what are the impacts so what are the consequences then what happened there will be no proper resource mobilization from the center government that is the government of india but the resource will start mobilized from the people and there will be internal revenue generation and there is no proper cross subsidization okay and there will be the uh, no proper resource use efficiency etc and even now onwards these institutions they will be they will be covering or they will be getting uh, money from the increasing of fees and as well as other charges from the students So if we're talking about this NEP, which mainly talks about to improve this enrollment, 
okay nep which mainly says that yes we have to increase enrollment in this higher education and we have to double this enrollment in this uh, colleges or universities that should be doubled by this 2035 but whenever there is increasing of fees then what happen most of the people they can't afford this especially if you see here if you're talking about high socioeconomic status people and rich people affluent people yes already the gross enrollment ratio is 100 percent from that section of society but here we are we need to focus on the socially economically disadvantaged groups whenever there is no public funding means what happened there will be the no enrollment from the socio-economic disadvantaged people and the goal of doubling of gross enrollment ratio will be like a not achievable okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see the next topic so this topic it is regarding conversion therapy so where we can see this conversion therapy conversion therapy is seen in this lgbtqia plus community so to understand this you have to know about homosexuality and heterosexuality so homosexuality means nothing but so one gender will be attracted towards the same gender that is a male gender will be attracted towards male female will be attracted towards female and if you're talking about heterosexuality so male will be attracted towards female so female will be attracted towards male so if you're talking about this homosexuality which is commonly seen in this lgbtqia community for example you can talk about gays lesbians etc so gays will be attracted towards male that is a male attracted towards male lesbian means female attracted towards female so what happens so we can see homosexuality which is commonly seen in this lgbtq community so in our society if there is a homosexual people means yes there will be discrimination against this people so because of this to avoid that discrimination actually this discrimination that will start in home itself in from their parents itself so because of this they will be going towards this conversion therapy so there is a belief that whenever they are going for this conversion therapy so they will be converting from homosexuality towards heterosexuality so here recently here madras court said that we should ban this conversion therapy okay and based on that judgment of this madras uh, court so recently national medical council which is uh, mainly going to take some decision regarding banning of this conversion therapy so now let us try to understand why it is in use so what is the context so if you see context it mainly says that your national medical commission so this national medical commission it is the apex regulatory body of medical profession in india and it has written to all state medical council that we have to go for banning we have to go for banning of this conversion therapy and we have to call this conversion therapy as a professional misconduct and even if anyone who are violating this then they will be also attracted under some legal punishment as well so this is context why it is in use and now let us try to see some details if you see details it mainly says that this conversion therapy is also called as reparative th therapy so this conversion therapy or reparative therapy it is an intervention which mainly aimed at changing sexual orientation so they want to change the sexual orientation or gender identity so this can be done by some methods like psych uh, psychiatric treatment or by taking some drugs or by extortism and even through violence so through these means they can go for this conversion therapy so recently madras high court which mainly gave the judgment to ban this conversion therapy in this lgbtq plus community so the case called as yes sushma versus commission of police case and this judgment also mandated that if there is any violation they can also go for legal action against those who are practicing this conversion therapy so now let us try to understand why ban why what is the need of this ban whether we need to go for this ban or not yes of course we have to go for banning of this conversion therapy so what are the reasons so the first one here is so there is a misguiding and as well unscientific notion so what is the important reason for this homosexuality because of abnormality in our chromosomes because of abnormality in the chromosomes but if you are going for the psychiatric therapy or uh, psychiatric therapy or whenever you are taking any drugs whenever you are changing your external features so how you can go for this heterosexuality 
So it is like a misguided and as well as unscientific notion. And next one here is it also takes from a false belief that non-heterosexual orientations are unnatural and immoral. So even what happened, gay marriages they had been legalized in number of countries. And even so there are number of people they are going for marrying the same sex. Correct? And here if you are talking about this homosexuality, it is not like a natural thing or immoral thing. So it is because of some hormonal changes. Right? And next one here is a number of Indians, they have been victims of conversion therapy. So they are mainly subjected to some physical and as well as emotional abuse. So even though whenever they are going for this uh, conversion therapies, so they are facing some problems like physical abuse and like emotional abuse etc. And this one here is about 98% of the people who have undergone this conversion therapy. So they are experiencing depression, anxiety and permanent physical harm and loss of the faith. And even if you see UK, UK recently pledged to outlaw this conversion therapy. And law which is also in practice in some other countries like Germany, Canada, Malta, Australia and as well as US. So in the same way here India it is the fifth largest economy in the world and recently we bypassed this UK. So why can't we come up with this kind of law? So think about this and let me know your suggestions okay in the comment box. And now let us try to see what are the measures that can be taken against this practice. So if this issue which comes as a case study then they will be asking like so suggest some measures. So these are the measures and you have to think in this way. So first one here is we need to impose professional sanctions against the medical practitioners who are engaging in this conversion therapy. So who are engaging, especially these medical practitioners, they had to be imposed as sanctions. And we have to ban this conversion therapy even involving minors who cannot consent to any such procedure. And even banning advertisements regarding this conversion therapy such that that will reduce the social acceptability as well. So these are some important measures that can be taken. And now let us try to see the next topic. So this topic it is regarding urban floods. That is the heavy floods in this Bangalore. So Bangalore it is facing floods now because of heavy rainfall. So this article is important from your geography point of view. And you are not going to talk about so in which area the floods happen. So what are the measures you are taking. But here we have to know about what are the main reasons for this urban floods. What are the major reasons for this urban floods. So what can be done. So what are the measures can be taken. So this will be an interview question. And even your mains question. So this topic is at most important from your mains and interview. So now let us try to understand this topic. And I hope you are following me right. So if you want to give any suggestions. So please give your suggestions in the comment box. So if you are talking about context why it is in news. So there is unprecedented heavy downpour. So there is a heavy rainfall that is seen in this Bangalore. So here. here they experienced about 131.6 mm of rainfall in the city. So because of this it is mainly causing inconvenience for the people to travel on the roads and even water which is seen up which is seen in this roads that will be like coming up to the knees. Because of this the civil civic infrastructure is not at all usable by the people. So roads they were inundated and rainwater they entered into homes that is flooded rainwater and flights they were diverted and buses and other vehicles they were stranded okay and even schools shut down and the boats they were deployed for the rescue in some areas. So we are talking about this urban floods. So I can say this urban floods as a man-made disaster will you accept with me. So will you accept if I say urban floods is a man-made disaster. So if we are talking about disasters, we have natural disaster, we have man-made disaster. So I can keep this urban flood in this man-made disaster, whether will you accept with me or not. Yes, this urban flood is a man-made disaster because, because of overburdened drainage, because of unregulated construction in the cities. Cities are just expanding without any proper plan. And next one here is without 
take into consideration natural topography yes they are going for building okay and recently twin towers which had been towers of noida right so here if you are talking about overburden drainage so because of increasing of population and what are the drainage system that are present in the cities there is a very old drainage age old drainage system so we didn't came up with the with the updates in our updating of our drainage system so because of this is one of the important cons i can say and there is unregulated constructions so even if there is any lake just present and they are coming up with the filling of this lake with the mud sand etc and they starting building apartments on that so and so area so because of this the wetland concentration or wetlands in the cities are decreasing day by day so we talking about what are the reasons for this urban floods so first one is inadequate drainage infrastructure for example in cities like hyderabad mumbai bangalore they rely on century old drainage system and this drainage system which is covering not at all entire city but even the core of the city and recently we are seeing there is expansion of the cities and this one is terrain alteration so what happened because of building of some concrete structures because of building some uh, some uh, structures for example like buildings apartments houses etc that is also leading to this uh, terrain alterations in that so and so area and reducing the seepage whenever there is increasing of this concrete buildings and whenever you are coming up with the laying of roads with the cement then what happen so there will be less percolation of water into the ground so because of this whenever there is a little rainfall also the roads will be get clogged with this water and this one is there is no proper implementation of this environment impact assessment before going for any buildings or constructions and there is also encroaching of natural spaces so the number of wetlands had been reduced from 644 to 123 so because of this actually what happened these wetlands they will be absorbing the excess water but whenever there is decreasing of this wetlands and what happen there will be no percolation of water there will be no absorption of excess water so what is the way forward what can be done yes we need to have a holistic management because just only municipality of this cities they are not going to handle this issue yes yes we need help from the different departments like metropolitan development authorities national disaster management authorities state revenue and irrigation departments okay along with the municipal corporation so we need a holistic engagement of different departments and we need to go for developing of a concept called as pond cities so the idea of this pond cities it is to make cities more permeable so that okay so that the water will be get percolated into the grounds so this is pond city concept which mainly came up by china and this pond cities absorb the rain water naturally and they will be filtered by the soil and allowed for the recharging of our aquifers aquifers are nothing but the rocks which hold water they are permeable rocks and if you are talking about wetland policy yes we need to take some attention regarding conservation of our wetlands and not only this yes we need to focus on better planning of our drainage so these are some important steps that can be taken and if you see this infography which mainly talks about cause of urban flooding the first one here is direct factors and second one is indirect factors so direct factors includes natural factors and as well as urbanization or the man made factors so natural factor include the because of global climate change that led to increasing of temperature so because of this that led to changing in the precipitation pattern that is rainfall pattern that will leads to heavy rainfall for example you can also talk about flood burst and this one is urbanization so we are going for this flood plains at, uh, encroachments and because of this there is a loss of natural drains and even whenever we are going for the continuous development in this urban areas so we are going for increasing of impervious areas roads roofs paved path paved uh, okay paved pathways etc and as far as indirect factors include there is no proper adequate drainage system and the attitude of people the people they will be not going for uh, segregation of waste so sometimes in this drainage also there will be the clogging of this uh, drainage uh, things which will mainly happen because of the waste like plastic etc okay and even improper no waste management so these are some important reasons for this urban floods 
and now let us try to see the next topic so this topic is talking about audit audit report flags fund misuse in mp so we are not going to see the political issues like so how much amount which is misused and in which scheme there is a misuse which happened but we are focusing on just audit because in your governance there is one topic that is regarding audit so if you want to improve the efficiency of this government yes we have to go for social audits so because of this i selected this topic especially to let you know about importance of audits and what is significance of this audits so this article which is important from your gs paper to under governance point of view so we are talking about why it is a news so recently here uh, accountant general came up with a report and this report and i thought that alleged fraud to the tune of several crores in the state's nutrition program for ch school children so in this maharashtra there was one key, there is one scheme that is called as a national nutrition program for school children so in this school children program that is a providing nutrition to the school children so there was some fraud which is mainly seen so it mainly unearthed by this audit report so what is the meaning of social audit so before seeing the social audits so how many types of audits are there so we have financial audit we have operational audit we have social audit so financial audit means yes how much amount which is mainly given in the budget so how much amount they spent and here operation means so whether they are following the procedure or not and social audit means so they will includes both financial as well as non financial audit and here the report will be given publicly okay public they will be having access to go through this report that is called as social audit social audit in simple way we can say it is a process in which the details of resources for example both financial and non financial they are used by this public agencies for de de for development act initiatives etc and it includes in the scrutiny and scrutiny and as well as analysis of the working of an entity so in the social audit so they will be they will be seeing the or looking at the details regarding the financial as well as non financial initiatives and they will be going for detailed scrutiny and they will be going for analysis etc and they will be coming up with a report and this report will be having access to the public so what is the significance of this audit the first and the foremost here is it will reduce the corruption so one important problem that we are facing in our society is corruption so because of this social audit it uncovers irregularities mal practices and that will reduce the leakages that will reduce the corruption and this one is monitoring and feedback so it monitors the social and as well as ethical impact of an organization performance and even it provides feedback and accountability and transparency so this social audit which ensures accountability and as well as transparency okay and this one here is it will be helpful for the people to participate that is a participatory democracy will be increased and it will be also centered in the gram sabhas so the voice of the gram sabha will be also heard because of the social audit and it will generate the demand from the people and it, it also improves the professionalism and even it will provides a collective platform so this will be the some important significance and this topic and this significance is very very important from your mains point of view and now let us try to see the last topic of the day it is regarding prevention detentions so this article which is talking about prevention detentions and this is uh, the data which is released by this ncrb and this topic is important from your polity point of view so if you see why it is in news so the preventive detentions okay the preventive detentions in 2021 which mainly raised by over 23.7 percentage so when we are comparing with the last year this year there is increasing of preventive detentions it is about 23.7 percentage so this data which released by ncrb okay and if you see some important details it mainly says that the preventive detention which refers to taking into custody okay of an individual so he is not at committed the crime but here authorities believes that so if this so and so person who is outside the jails means so there is a threat to law and order so mainly to prevent the crime to be happened so this person will be taken into custody under this preventive detention so the one important case here is ankul chandra pradhan versus union of india so the court stated that the object of this prevent objective of this uh, preventive detention it is not to punish but just to prevent 
the crime to be happened. Okay, so if we are talking about constitutional provisions of this preventive detention, so we have Article 22 in our constitution. So this Article 22, which grants protection to the persons who are arrested or detained. So if we are talking about detention, we have punitive detention as well as preventive detention. So punitive detention means to punish the person after doing the offence. But this preventive detention means nothing but, so it means the detention of the person without trail and as well as conviction by the court. So these are some important laws which are made by the Parliament of India under which preventive detention is allowed. So we are talking about what are the issues regarding this preventive detention. So this topic is important from your means, what are the issues? So first one here is, there is no democratic country in the world which has made this preventive detention as an integral part of our constitu constitution. So because of this, why this should be present in India? So this is one issue. And second one is the government sometimes using this type of laws as extrajudicial power. Okay. So and they are also going for arbitrary detentions. So this is also second important issue regarding this preventive detentions. And now let us try to see today's prelims practice questions. So first question is regarding Actually, these two questions are regarding governance, policy and governance. So, which of the following could be the reasons for the failure of infrastructure projects by the public sector enterprises? So, first one is ineffective governance, yes. Cost overruns, yes. Optimum input-output ratio is uh, rarely observed, leading to overcapitalization, yes. And lack of inter-ministerial and departmental coordination, yes. So, correct answer is D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And next... Question here is regarding citizen charter. So this topic that you can see directly in your syllabus in your governance. So it creates accountability on individuals and organization providing services, yes. It values taxpayers money, yes. It improves quality of services, yes. And also specify what to expect and how to act if standards are not met, yes. So that option will be C, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And today's main question is discuss the issues and concerns associated with preventive detention law in the country. So in introduction you can write about what is this preventive detention and it will be very good if you are starting with the constitutional provisions like article 22 of our Indian constitution. And you can write about punitive detention and as well as preventive detention under this article 22. And the body have to write about what are the issues I discussed and also the concerns. And you can also write about the way forward at last. So I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathod Science, we came up with this mains answer writing practice course of one year. And under this, we are going to cover your GS1, GS2, GS3 and GS4. And we are giving a daily one question in the website. On, on Sunday, there will be essay or case study practice. So we will provide you the evaluation of your answer. We provide model answer for that so and so question. And we are also going to meet on live every Sunday. And apart from that, we are also going to give you one-to-one -one mentorship. So this course is excellent and there are a number of students who are getting benefited from this course. So try to join this course and the cost of this course here is just 8,200 rupees for one year. So it is a very, very affordable and try to join this course. And also we came with this prelims test series and this test series is also very much affordable. And the price of this test series is 3,000 and this price, it may go, uh, it may be changed, okay, it may be increased within 10 to 15 days. So please try to use this opportunity and try to join this course. Okay, in this prelims test series, we are going to give you 30 tests which includes both GS and as well as CSAT. So if you want to clear this UPSC prelims, yes, you have to join this course and you have to analyze where you are going wrong. And you have to identify some techniques. So how they will be working for you. And it will be also helpful to identify which are your strength areas and which are your weak areas. So this will be helpful for the increasing of chance of clearing this prelims and the cost here is just 3000 rupees. And if you have any doubts regarding these courses, so call me on this number 8074765513. Okay. So now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu newspaper. So the first article here it is regarding UK's next prime minister. Okay, UK's Next Prime Minister, actually Truce, Truce wins conservative race to be UK's next president. So I was thought like, uh, so I was, th I had a thought like, yes, Indian origin, uh, Rishi Sunaki is going to be 
the next UK's Prime Minister. But unfortunately, truth he she wins this conservative race, and she is the next UK's Prime Minister. Okay, and if you move forward here, you can see about uh, urban floods in Bangalore. I discuss this topic, and next topic here is Pakistan takes back body of infiltrator. So actually, what happened? So this person he entered India through this border, and at the border he was. Uh, he was catch and he he got some injuries and he was also gave the treatment by indian officials and finally he lost the life so pakistan takes the body now so if you move forward you can leave this uh, uh, pages so there is nothing much important and wherever there is important articles i will be showing that so in this page number 6 also there is nothing much important and even in this page number 7 also and in this editorial page So I discussed about this India Pakistan article. I discussed about this importance of seed belts, and here I discussed about this public education article. So here there is one article regarding health. So health is also the part of our governance. So there is one article regarding the importance of the public health. So public health need not be led by the doctors alone, but even nurses and some other people, healthcare providers, they can be also taken into considerations. And the text and text and context I discussed about this safety regulations. I discussed about this LGBTQ community. So if you move forward here in this twelfth page, there is article regarding India and Bangladesh. So this article I already discussed in yesterday's lecture. So here, here one comedy uh, done by this uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina here is. So we are not getting enough water because of this. We are not going to provide hills of fish to you. But she said uh, laughing. Okay, by laughing. So this is one important thing, and you have to know about this Tista. And many of you uh, gave the replies regarding this Tista, and I felt very happy. So once this meeting is done, so we are going to get many articles. So in that time, we are going to discuss that. And here, regarding this audit report, I discussed about the social audit. And if you move forward, I discussed about this preventive detention topic as well. And here you can see one most important article that is Arya Samaj certificates not proof of marriage. So here, if you are talking about here inter-caste marriages. So it regarding this inter-caste or inter-religious or inter-faith marriages, yes, we have special marriage. Right, sir. So one important cause of concern here regarding the Special Marriage Act was so before thirty days itself, we have to give a notification that we are we uh, we so and so persons we want to uh, marry together. Okay, we want to marry. So, but if there is no time and if there is a very great pressure from the families, means yes, they will come to this Arya Samaj and they will be get married. But now here court said that this Arya Samaj certificates are not proof of marriages. So this is one cause of concern regarding this inter-religious or inter-faith marriages. So if you move on, in the world page here you can see strong earthquake in the southwest China kills forty-six people. So you have to know about some facts regarding the earthquake. And if you open your NCERT, so you will be having a separate chapter on this earthquake. So please go through that once. And here you can talk about this PM, that is purchasing manager index. Actually, this index which is separate for infrastructure and separate for services. So this article is talking about services. So these are some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to our Thoughts IS Academy and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting the regular notifications. And for the PDF, you can visit our website rathodsisacademy.com. And one more thing here is, if you really like this video, hit the like button and share this video to your friends also. So by this, I am concluding. Thank you so much and have a nice day.